Okay. So Fana, this is for you. Um, I'm gonna make a little tutorial for you uh, on a, basically a YouTube video because I wanna make some YouTube videos eventually and I just wanna see how everything works out basically. Uh, so this is like a little practice for me and hopefully I can give you some good information. Um, so you're gonna teach my student and uh, Simon and um, I, th I, I told his parents that I would explain to you how, how I was teaching him so you can continue in the same kind of style. Um, so I'll show you how everything works. I'll show you all the websites I'm using and basically what I've been doing. So um, yeah, first of all, I'll show you what I've been doing. Let's have a look. Um, bup, 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 bup. So let's have a look at iDrew. Uh, I'll show you what we've just doing recently. Uh, one sec, there we go. So this is Simon's uh, uh, whiteboard. We went through a lot of different stages. We did a lot of different things. I mean, he literally came with like zero English. And then uh, he worked his way up to uh, speaking English. Um, his dad said he doesn't really like studying math, uh, English classes because English classes are boring. So he said teach him like mathematics because he knew how to say like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's about it. Um, and uh, we did a lot of different stages. Like I said, we, we did a lot of just uh, messing around and drawing loads of pictures. And that's actually really good. The, this whiteboard is a really nice platform for you to draw pictures on and um, really communicate with your students. I, I had another girl in, uh, in Russia. Um, I taught her how to speak as well. Uh, and we just spent the whole time drawing fantastic pictures. He's a really good drawer, like nine years old, like amazing. She had a drawing tablet and everything like, um, and because we're just learning English, that that's fine. Uh, that's that's part of the curriculum, right? Uh, you know, draw a picture of a duck and then you say duck and then draw a picture of a dog and say dog and say, have you got a dog? And I say, yeah, my dog is, and then you just go like that. And that's really cool. Yeah, you, have, you can actually facilitate a conversation by having something to draw on, uh, by having those visual you know, pictures. Um, Right, okay, there's visual pictures. Yes, pictures are visual. All right, um, so yeah, this is the the whiteboard that he's currently working on. We've had about 10 whiteboards. Uh, he's been my student for about a year and a, probably about a year. And um, we are like working through loads of mathematics. You can see all these myth mathematics um, and Doritos uh, mathematics um, worksheets. And I can copy and paste images from Google onto here so we can talk about it in more detail. We talk about to explain the idea of what a reflection is. We're doing rotations, um, reflections, lines of symmetry. Um, and basically, as you can see, I'm using Corbett Maths. Uh, I'll show you the website for that in a second. Um, so the student can write on this and you write on it as two and you write together. So that's really great. Um, and it doesn't matter if you get sidetracked because um, that's, that's a picture of Simon. Uh, it doesn't matter if you get sidetracked because, like I said, everything's English. So as long as you're speaking, it's absolutely fine. Um, and he does like bananas. He likes bananas a lot. So he you see a lot of bananas on the boards. Um, but we can do basic mathematics and he'll understand the concepts. The good thing is he'll understand the concepts in Polish. And then to translate them actually is actually quite easy because it's just like he knows how to do it. And then he learns the actual vocabulary related to that task, which is really cool. So... Uh, here he is. Here's Simon. It's Godzilla, Simon. Yeah, sometimes that happens. Um, no, he's a really cool guy, actually. It never happens, you know, he gets angry. Um, okay, so there's loads and loads of maths we just did on there. And we're just not, it's not all maths. We do a bit of English as well. But he does like the maths a bit, bit better. Um, I go, I'll show you some English resources, which I'd really like to give you because they're really, really useful. Um, I think you can use them quite a lot. For students who don't speak any English, like absolute zero. So like if you, I mean, if you've got guys who speak English, that's great. But what about people who speak nothing? Like how do you even get started on that? Um, so I made a whole lot of resources for this website, on this website, on this IG, um, which involved cutting and pasting a lot of pictures um, and making them. And basically they follow the Cambridge English uh, levels. So this is pre-A1, uh, then there's A1, there's A2, and A, you know, B1, B2, and it goes up. But it's basically just for the lower level to get them speaking because uh, we need some kind of activity to do. So we play games. And uh, like I said, the actual vocabulary is based around the Cambridge exams and the Cambridge uh, workbooks. So they will learn the vocabulary they need to pass the exams if they want to take some exams, which I don't suggest they do. I just need. To, I just thought I'd give it a bit of a good structure, a bit of a more... Um, renowned structure rather than just like oh I did some English learned some English it's like actual Cambridge English um, so you can play some games with them the students can click on the pointer and you can move these objects around and the idea is the first activity is you join together the animals with the names 
Uh, we match them up. And then we play some games. Uh, we have two pairs of every animal. You can see there's two monkeys there. Um, and all the cards mixed up. And then you actually have to cover up the cards. You have to copy and paste this onto our whiteboard. And then cover up the cards. And you take it in turns picking pairs of cards to find to the same. Okay, it's a pretty basic game. Um, but it's better than nothing. And it's, it's in process of becoming something a bit bigger. So, um, and you can play with multiple students. This is the cool thing. This website, you can have two or three people on at once. And they can, they can work together. The idea of these activities is that you uh, speak English. You listen to English. So you're speaking and listening. That's the most important thing for me, as far as I'm concerned. Then you are uh, going to be writing it. And then you're going to be reading it. Actually, you're going to be reading it than writing it. Uh, yeah. Okay. So here's the next one. Here's we're going to read. I said it in Spanish, but because my students are Spanish speakers here in Argentina, but um, it doesn't have to be Spanish. And they have to draw a picture. You drag the page down like this. You drag the card down, and they have to draw a picture or say the word in their native language. Um, if you don't speak much Polish, it might be a bit easier if they draw a picture of it. And uh, they like drawing pictures as well. Quick picture for each one. Um, and you keep doing that for all of them. There's loads more behind there uh, to make sure they can actually read the word. All right. Uh, without just looking at the pictures. Then we are going to write every single one. So you take the exact same idea. You've got a picture of a hippopotamus. They got to write hippo. That's great. And then like a snake. So you got to write snake. That's fantastic. And uh, you do that for each one as well. Great. And then there's a few more games at the end if you have some extra time. Really, really cool. So um i do that a little bit he doesn't really uh, simon doesn't really like the the english that much he gets a bit bored he'll do a few times but then he really wants to just do some mathematics or do some drawings uh, and we, we try to stick to the maths actually now there nowadays um but like i said we went through a lot of stages of uh, just drawing random drawings and having a lot of fun um and that was really cool um you know sometimes the students will resist the classes they don't really want to study and then their parents make them or they're a bit you know shy or whatever so we did that we literally spent about five classes just doing nothing just drawing bananas uh banana tornadoes in fact and um then after that he, he kind of like clicked and changed and said okay we might as well do something and we started doing other stuff and like drawing more pictures and then eventually got enough vocabulary to actually communicate and then we were off uh doing mathematics okay so i'll show you the websites i'm using so you can get these websites from my website uh which uh, is mrdavidmath.com um oh yeah like what do you teach a guy in year five um so I try to make on my website a list of all the different years or the different curriculums for each grade and basically a list of what you should be teaching them. So go to year five, for example, under curriculum section. And then um, we'll have a quick look there. And you can see year five. And this is all in accordance with the English British curriculum. But it's pretty much the same around, around Europe. There's no big difference around the world. And then you basically work through every topic like this uh, until you finish the whole year. And it gives you a bit of structure to what you should be teaching when you should be teaching it. So, for example, the first one is counting backwards through zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to get a worksheet and put it onto the page, onto the onto the I drew white whiteboard. So let's go back to Simon's page, and um, we will see if we can get one on there. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, I'll show you how it works. So on my website as well. So we're going to do counting backwards through zero, which We'll try and find a worksheet on that. Um, let's have a look on my on the front page. We can see it says um, worksheets. Let's click on that, and I got all these different resource websites, which is really, really good. Um, or link on the picture. So Corbett Maths Primary is really good for primary school, primary elementary. I got these two actually. Oh, hey, hey, look at that. Okay, click on that guy. Um, and then it gives you a big old list of different worksheets. So let's see if we can find something. I don't think we're going to find anything on counting backwards through zero, but we can find something on negative numbers. So there's negative numbers right there. Um, there's a whole lot of worksheets here. Uh, negative numbers. There's some videos as well, but you know, you're the video, so you don't need that. Click on the questions. It will take you to another link. Uh, then click on that, and it will take you to a PDF. And then we're going to download this PDF, um, and then we're going to upload it. We're going to drag it onto the page. So uh, here's the PDF. I already got a copy, so yes, I'm going to replace it. Here it is downloading here, in my browser, and I go to Simon's board. Oh, here it is. And then uh, I already did it last video because it's the second take. Um, here we go. And we drag it onto the page like that, and it uploads, and then we have negative numbers. And then you can drag in pages. Depends on how good your computer is, how quickly it will load. Um, 
uh, you can drag on pages onto the whiteboard, which then allows you to work on it. And you can just drag on all the pages for the whole pack. I suggest you do the whole pack. Towards the end, it'll get more difficult. It's graduated, the, the first ones are easy, then it gets more difficult. So you, maybe the last couple of pages you wanna do that. And you, one thing you have to do is you have to lock this down to the background. Otherwise the pages will disappear every time you try to delete something, every time you try to uh, erase something, it'll delete the, back, the page. So lock, lock down, then you click on the pencil and then you can draw on it and you have loads of fun solving all the questions and making loads of, uh, loads of math exercises, yay. Okay, so that's a really good one. Um, that's the English, the British um, education system for, for Corbett Maths. Um, there's another one which is K5 Learning for, for the American version, um, which I'll, I'll, is also linked on my website here. Um, da -da -da. See if it loads up, there we go, K5 Learning. Uh, this is the American version, but it's much more just like rote learning. All the American resources are much more just like, uh, here's a bunch of exercises, do it, uh, rather than like, interesting fun things um unfortunately uh they care about quantity rather than quality i guess so um for example here's year three uh if i want to do some really basic maths like uh we can do that uh, the difference is a whole bunch of uh, worksheets and it's just a bunch of exercises and they could be kind of boring um there's one more there's another website i gotta link up um, okay, so all these different uh, exercises, you can do them and it has all the answers and it's really good for like emergency situations or if you want to practice something with some kids, like uh, say maybe you've got some students and they need to practice their three times tables or their seven times tables. We go to the website, website, you find the appropriate grade for them, say they're in grade four, and then you say, oh, hey guys, we're going to do some practice for the seven times tables because you're not good at your seven times tables and we need to practice a whole bunch of them. And kids will love that. Kids like doing simple activities again and again and again like that. And they will get bored eventually. Um, so I normally do about half hour of the, the iDrew website like that. Then um, I do a bit of IXL. So I'm going to give you a login for IXL, uh, which is also linked on my website. Well, let's just go to IXL. Um, and I, so I'll give you a username and password. I pay uh, a teacher's uh, subscription for about 50 different logins, which I give to all my students. It's really, really good. I'll give you one for free so you can use it and you can share your password out to your students and they can log in as you and then they can do some exercises. It's just a bit different. Um, so I'll show you, it has English on it and it has math on it. The English is not second language English, it's native English. So it's quite, kind of difficult, um, but it is high level. If you've got high level learners, um, it has some really good exercise on there. You can check out the English. I'm going to check out the math right now. Um, for example, we go to year five and your students actually have to log in on their account. So make them log in on their computer, make them share screen if they can. And then they do the work and you, um, you watch them and you give them advice. You say, duh, don't do that. Do this, blah, blah, blah. Um, and they, they will work through it. It's a bit more, um, it's just a different type of activity. Like if you're working on the whiteboard all day long, it gets a bit boring. So it's just a way to switch it up. So um, this is a way to, uh, they also, in, they're in control. So they, they're typing everything in and um, uh, they're typing everything in and they're just much more in control. They just like it. Like, so I know it's about 30 minutes on the whiteboard and then about 15 minutes of this or 20 minutes of this, maybe, maybe more on the whiteboard. Actually, I do quite a lot on the whiteboard. Um, this is just when things, when the students get a bit bored, you know, when they start to lose focus uh, and they start just drawing like random pictures, it's like, okay guys, I send you a link um, here's some, some maths for you to do. Let's do, for example, Roman numerals. That sounds like fun. Um, and they log in on, so you guide them through, guide them to it and they log in on their account and then they go ahead and do it and they get points and prizes and you know, it's a bit more fun. Um, and I do that the last like 10, 15 minutes of a class. So what's I and Roman numerals? Oh, that's one. Uh, what's V I I O? Oh, I have no idea. What is that? It's 14, 16. Oh, I got it right. Okay. And if you get it wrong, it's really cool because it gives you the answers and explains like explanation and how, what you should be doing and how to get it right next time. You click got it and you continue. It's graduated. It does get more difficult as you go along. It's like an adaptive technology. So it has like four different internal stages and it goes higher and higher and higher. Okay. That's great. Um, in the last uh, 10 minutes, I normally play a game. So there's another website called Academics, which is also on my website. You can link to it. I use Academics. And the students actually have a login. I actually make a login for them. I pay $5 a year for every student, each student. And it's really, really cool because they get like a login. We play some games. For example, um, a really cool game. There's a whole bunch of different math games here. There's a few English games as well. Um, 
but like I said, they're normal, more like native English games. So uh, we have loads of different math games. So we're gonna play uh, canoe penguins. Now we're gonna play uh, penguin jump. That's a classic. That's really good. There's some really good games and some really bad games. And it's a really good game. And uh, you gotta try different ones. Some of them are really impossible. Some of them are really easy. The really easy ones are the best because you can play them super super quickly. Oh, the idea is it's a multiplayer, right? So you're playing with your students, against your students. You can play with them in cooperative games or against them in competitive games. And people can join from around the world. Oh, there's a couple of people joining right now. Great. And we're going to jump as penguins because penguins jump, apparently. Um, and it's basic multiplication. Like I said, it's a bit of fun at the end of the class. And um, it's a bit of motivation. The students start to flag a little bit in the last 10 minutes, like 15 minutes. Like, oh, come on, guys, do a little bit more work and then we'll play some games. Um, oh, I'm not paying attention. Um, if they don't want to work, then we don't have to play any games. Uh, and you can push them a little bit harder because of that. Um, most parents are okay with it. I got a few parents uh, who rather their students just study the whole time. But then after I talked to them, I said, hey, guys, you know, uh, I'm, I'm increasing your students, but your, your kids' performance because um, they have more motivation. They actually have no problem with it um and they get really really good the kids, the kids are really good they, they'll probably destroy you uh like they destroy me um every time i play um okay so we can play the games uh, i'll just try and finish this level um you get like uh you get points you get different um skins you get different power-ups after a while um so it's really really cool um another one i use we play them a lot i really need some more games uh, uh another one i use is if that doesn't load I play something like battleships. So here's